So I started a little bit of a flap on Twitter earlier today when somebody asked me whether or not they should burn an item that they felt was dangerously haunted in order to remove it and to purge the thing that they felt was haunting it. I do not always favor burning as the best way to dispose of things that people feel are dangerously haunted. Instead, uh, I am more of an advocate of either burying the item or submersing it in water. Now, burning is a tried and true method. It has quite a history. Uh, in his book, Forbidden Rites, uh, Professor Richard Kiekheffer tells of the Middle Ages when a number of Christian authorities would take books, grimoires, magical books that uh, were concerned with demonic and spiritual magic, spiritual magic as in the, the summoning and binding of spirits. Uh, many of the people at the time believed that these books held the spirits themselves somehow in their pages and so that they were thought to be haunted, that these, these demons were bound to the book itself. There are a couple of instances where the books were put on trial as if they were sentient entities and then they are executed by being committed to the flames. Kikhefer then quotes uh, and refers to the hagiographies of several saints who uh, were believed to have basically exercised books like this by burning them. Now, the idea that fire purges, that fire purifies, is certainly an old one, and you will find it visited again and again in cultures around the globe. However, in my experience, one of the things that I have found is while it will often purge and destroy, there are at least a few instances where rather than destroying what is attached to the item, all it does is release it. And this is something to be aware of. It is a potential complication. So all you end up doing in some occasions, if you have a dangerously haunted object, by destroying that object in fire, what you end up doing is releasing the thing that is bound to the object so that it can then simply no longer be bounded to that item and move freely but continue its mischief. I favor burying because it is a method of binding. You are putting the item into the earth. Uh, one of the old ways of doing it would literally to be tie it up, to bind it with a, a rope, to bind it in cloth, to in some way cover it up and restrain it symbolically, and then bury it fairly deep into the earth because the earth grounds out the energy. It sh shields everybody else from the energy. I know some people feel a little leery about doing that because they don't want to taint the land with the item. Uh, but think about what we do to get rid of a lot of waste, a lot of regular physical waste. We often bury it and part of that process that the earth goes through is the earth will break it down, putting it into the soil, it will slowly leach the things out. And if it is tremendously, horrifically tainted, uh, yes, it will leave a mark in that space that will be removed over time. Uh, but in some cases, when you are dealing with something that you feel has something truly evil, truly harmful, truly dangerous attached to it, you do not want to run the risk of releasing that by in any way destroying the object it's tied to. You're one leg up in having it tied to an item. It's bound to that in a way that means in some cases that it, it, it's limited by being stuck to the item. So limit it further by removing it completely from human association by burying it in the earth. Now the other method, which is submersion in water, and I don't mean dropping it in the bottom of a swimming pool or putting it in water in your sink. Uh, live bodies of water, the deeper the better. Uh, this would be you know, lakes, ponds, oceans, uh, rivers if they're deep, but one of the problems with a river or a stream is because of the rapid motion of that water, it's not like this is going to sink to the bottom and stay stationary in one place surrounded and thus protected, shielded by the water. Instead, the water is just going to carry it from one place to another. So if you are going to submerse it in water, what you want to do is weight it down. Once again, go through the process of tying it up, binding it, literally binding it, and then dunking it into the water somewhere where it is going to sink all the way to the bottom and be, once again, removed from human interaction. The water naturally shields it from other energies. So if you have a predatory spirit that is attached to this thing, 
by putting it in the water, by submersing it as deep as you can, you are removing it from its ability. You are shielding it and protecting it from its ability to reach the energy of living people, to feed and power itself, and essentially you are isolating it. There is an older tradition than the Middle Ages uh, fire burnings and, and purgings that Kikhefer refers to. And this is the Solomonic tradition. It is based off of King Solomon, referred to in the Bible as one of the wisest men, if not the wisest man, ever to be born. In Jewish, Christian, and Muslim folklore, there is a lively tradition that King Solomon had power to bind and compel demons. And you will find this in... Um, the Jewish Haggadah and in a number of extra biblical texts. It is at the very foundation of ceremonial magic, uh, which was rather lively in uh, Europe in the Middle Ages and Renaissance and has inheritors of its tradition these days. One of the main beliefs about King Solomon is he had this thing, it was called Solomon's Brazen Vessel. It was a vessel of brass that Solomon had bound 72 spirits and demonic princes and all of these horrible entities. He took them and he bound them into the vessel. He sealed them up. He stoppered it. He used his power over demons and a seal given to him by God, uh, in the, as the story goes, to keep them bound in this object. And then he dumped it into the middle of a lake. Now, of course, as the story goes, with many boxes that bad things are sealed up into, some people had heard about it and were intensely curious about Solomon's brazen vessel and were pretty sure that it must contain some sort of amazing tre treasure. So, subsequently, they went, dredged the lake, dug it up, and pulled it out of the water and let all the evil things back out by breaking the seal. But the concept there, the concept there is why I will favor <clears throat> more than anything else even more than burying, if you have something that you think is really horrible, you do not want anyone coming into contact with this, you think the thing that is attached to this item is dangerous and categorically aggressive, you want to put it in something, tie it up, bind it, seal it, weight that something down, and then drop it into the bottom of the deepest body of water you know of. Drop it into the bottom of an unused well if you can find one. Put it far away from humanity, and the water helps to shield it. Water wears away energy, and the more it is removed from people, the longer it is removed from people, the more its energy will wane, and it will lose its power. Now, of course, you do always run the risk with binding of any sort that it's going to get let back out. I have not found a method that is absolutely permanent for any spirit, but if you want to remove it for as long as possible, that would be my best recommendation.